Alrighty, welcome back. So I've got a new heli today. It's been a while since I've bought a new helicopter. Um, I think the uh, MCPX was the last new heli that I bought. But I decided to go a little bit bigger today. Drove down to my local hobby shop and picked up the brand new Blade 500 3D. Well, it's not new. Uh, no, if you're familiar with this, then this helicopter came out about 10 years ago. And um, it's brand new um, because it's never been flown. Uh, not even once other than by myself after I purchased it. So I'm very, very excited to have this um, older piece of blade technology. I was just a kid when this thing came out and I had just recently kind of gotten into helicopters. I had a Nano CPX uh, before they ever put safe on it. And that's how I learned to fly collective pitch. And this was out around that time. And I remember looking at this thing on the internet and uh, thinking that I could save up my money and get this, and of course I never did. This was something that I was not ready for at all. But, you know, me and the Blade 500 3D crossed paths once again. A gentleman um, bought this thing brand new all those years ago, and he never really used it. He wasn't quite confident enough to take this thing out, and he knew his limitations, and he made the hard decision to put it in the box and to not touch it. And um, I think he's actually trying to get back into helicopters now with the newer technology, with the fly barless stuff and the safe and all that good stuff. And I was more than happy to buy this from him. Um, and uh, I'm very, very happy to own it. And I think that I got it for a great deal. And um, I'm very pleased that I had the you know opportunity to get this. So um, the Blade 500 3D, here it is. We're gonna go ahead and let you see it because you know it's brand new, of course. All right, there we go. Classic blade with a giant fly bar um, or the paddles or the spatulas, um, whatever you'd like to call them. So I've actually never flown up until this thing. I have flown it a few times. Up until this thing, um, I've never flown a fly barred helicopter. And I have to say, is it as good as a fly barless helicopter? No, and that's what I'm used to. But I actually have to say that it flies really, really good to be, you know, fly barred and to have the older technology in it. Um, so it's a 500 size helicopter. Now, back in the day, they used to size these helicopters based off the size of the motor. So it actually swings 425 millimeter blades. Well, 400, so now it would be considered like probably rounded up to maybe like a 450 nowadays um so i wanted to get something that is similar to a 450 that i had on hand and i have a 480 which is blade's latest and greatest highest performing model now it has been stretched to the 550 but the canopy the frame is all the same so you can kind of see how big it is just don't pay attention to the length of the tail boom or the blades but here is my 480 and I will tell you this, Blade has come a long, long ways. So, now if we take a look at this, you can actually see that they're not really that far off in size um, as far as the head goes. I mean, yes, this, this has got a very beefy fly barless head, huge middle grips and all that stuff, but it's really not too far away from each other, um, especially if I were to take off this really, really big canopy. They're very close. And so um, lots of differences there. Now, of course, the tail boom is a lot longer on the 550, but it wouldn't be very long. It wouldn't be too, too much longer than this 500 3D here. So I thought that was pretty cool to do a comparison between the two. Um, a lot of stuff has changed since Blade, you know, uh, came out with this, these helicopters. Now this was, um, the 500 here was, was around back when the 450 3D was popular. And the 453D was a very, very popular helicopter. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at this thing a little bit more up close. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually take the camera off here. So this thing is brand new and I love this canopy. It is Lexan, but I really love the colors. It has carbon fiber um, chassis or frame, which is a little bit more rare back in the day for Blade. An aluminum tail belt guide. Um, your generic one-way bearing setup with your main gear and your tail belt there. Um, all that stuff's good. Um, DSMX is still running. It was running DSMX back in the day, so that's really, really nice to see. So I don't have any issues with or worries with connectivity or anything like that. This does come with carbon fiber blades. 
Um, this is something that I was very excited to see because the 450 and others, some of them came with wooden blades and you know these carbon blades seem to be doing very very well i don't have any issues with them um, that the, the quality looks just fine the old blade logo plastic blade grips and some cnc parts up here and of course the spatulas here they look just fine an aluminum swash um a plastic anti-rotation bar an aluminum um, top block here, three bearing support, and you of course you've got your good old G210 tail gyro. So back in the day, um, the only gyro on these helicopters to, was to control the tail, you know, because this is a mechanical setup. Um, there is no fly barless system. There is no aileron or elevator gyro. It's all done mechanically through the fly bar. And it actually works really, really well. Another really neat thing about the 500 is it has standard size servos. So let me go ahead and take off this, this really, really pretty canopy. I'm really careful with everything just simply because they don't make a lot of this stuff anymore. And um, I don't plan on flying this helicopter a lot because of that. But here is that really, really pretty canopy, really big and bulbous and uh, painted polycarbonate. It looks really good. And here is the battery tray. You have a 70 amp E-Flight ESC under there, or just their generic ESC with a good old EC3 on it. Love those days. I mean, that EC3 is just, look at how big the gauge is going into that. I might put an IC5 on this. I'm not 100% sure. Luckily, this helicopter runs off of batteries that I still have. That that's, This um, 480 actually used to run off of this before I put the stretch kit. So this fits in there, but it's a little bit big for the canopy unless you really, really squeeze it on. So I'm gonna have to figure something out because I really don't wanna wear out these grommets and I don't wanna scratch out the paint on the polycarbonate. So I'm gonna have to figure something out, but I have flown this thing with the success here with an adapter and it does just fine. A 520 can uh, brushless motor there, nothing special. Um, standard sized servos. I absolutely love to see those standard sized servos. A lot easier to mess with, replace, and just more reliable than the submicros. They're very glossy carbon fiber finish. Everything looks really, really good. And I have to say, out of the box, for it to be a blade helicopter that's pre built, you know that sometimes you get a lemon, whereas they're not set up mechanically, um, you know, sharp at all, and you have to really redo it. This thing was pretty close. Not much trimming required whatsoever. And so um, even today I've gotten blade helicopters that have been so out of whack from the factory that you really have to go through and manually do everything again. This one was actually pretty good. So I'm, I'm excited about that. So we have the tail boom here. We have good old tail supports, which is a pretty much a thing of the past. I mean, the only people that really use tail supports anymore is a line from what I've seen. And that's just because they don't make their booms big enough or strong enough to, to go without them. I'm personally not a tail support fan. I think they look, um, I think they just take away from the cleanness and sleekness of a helicopter in general, but it's very classic with that horizontal wing there, that plastic wing that looks really good. So nothing, nothing to complain about there. Um, everything works just fine, of course. Everything is operational. Now there is something that you have to be careful um, when it comes to the 500 3D, and that is that there was a recall. Also, take a look at, I mean, I've bought blade helicopters recently, very recently within the last couple of years, and whoever was doing their wire um, sorting or, or their zip tying, they did like an excellent job. I mean, this is really unsightly, don't get me wrong, but they're all like that. They all have extra wire. They don't cut it down to size. They just zip tie it up. But whoever did this did like a really, really, really good job. <laughs> I mean, I'm really impressed with just how clean the zip tie job is. They even have heat shrink right there to keep it from chafing going into the tail gyro. Um, yeah, kudos to um, the factory that was building this uh, nine years ago. Still may be the same factory, probably not. But yeah, someone was doing some pretty good, some pretty good, um, wire management back in the day you got your tail servo here sticking out super super just hideous in the way um you know the helicopters today hide those pretty good but that's how it was back in the day and they still have helicopters blade still makes the 450 basically and they have like the fusion 180 those have to sit out here not a big deal but uh yeah pretty unsightly big old servo there 
So anyway, what I was talking about was the tail grips. Now you'll notice that I have aluminum tail grips on this thing. And if you remember the, four, uh, the 500 back in the day, they actually had a recall on the tail grips. So the tail grips were plastic and I had the offset um, mounting hole. If you had ones with the offset mounting holes, you have to purchase new ones because the ones that were um, had the offset mounting hole had a chance of actually separating from the, um, I think the whole grip was gonna separate from the hub. So before I purchased this, I had to make sure I could get either the new plastic ones, which are still available, or the aluminum ones, which are still pretty readily available. So I was able to go ahead and buy the aluminum upgraded tail grips and fix that issue immediately. So um, if you do have one of these or for some reason find one that's in great shape and you wanna buy it, take a look at those tail grips first because if they're the uh, defective ones, you really do not wanna fly with those. So you have a pretty generic setup back here in the back, a plastic tail case. You actually have a bearing back here for the belt, which is pretty nice. You don't see that on all blade helicopters. And everything checks out really, really well back here. They still make quite a few aluminum upgrades that are pretty easily to get from just straight from Horizon. They still have the aluminum tail case. They still have the aluminum anti-rotation bracket. They have the aluminum, um, I can't remember exactly what this piece here is called because I'm not familiar with fly bar helicopters, but you can get this in full aluminum. I think it's called a tabletop or something. Um, they even make an aluminum um, uh, main gear pulley right here. This is actually a plastic gear behind, under this belt. They make that in aluminum. You can still get carbon fiber stuff for it, black sleds. Um, I don't know if you can get blades for it anymore, which is pretty daunting. So I'm not 100% sure, but um, blades may not be something you can get. But you know, everything else is just fine. Um, if you get one of these, you have to take it as for what it is. You could crash this thing, this thing could break down, and then it would be um, a dust collector. You have to understand that. And of course, anybody who's selling these, they should definitely understand that when they're trying to think of a price. Um, even though it's a brand new helicopter, they're not worth all that much because it, it may not be um, fixable and that that destroys your value so um, I will take great care of this thing I will fly it um, just a few times um, you know just once in a blue moon put maybe like less than 15 flights a year on it just kind of go out there and enjoy it on a really pretty day um, it's a really good flying helicopter and I will put a video up of this thing I even still have the bag of goodies that came with it um, they've never been opened the blades were in a plastic sleeve stapled and they have never been opened. You'd be able to tell if the staple was taken out and restapled, they had never been opened. So it really was a never used 500 3D. And I even got the box with it, which is a beautiful box. Um, I also got all of the paperwork with it, of course. Um, so I got the information on the um, G210, which is pretty easy if you need to readjust that. You take a flathead screwdriver and set your limits. You know, it's very, it's similar to what we do today, except it's all done in the fly barless system. There's a checklist here. Back when Revolution was around, upgrades from Revolution. That's pretty cool. That looks like a 500X. That's basically this helicopter right here, but with a fly barless system. This came a year or two after this did. So that's pretty neat as well. So that means that the 500X was already out um, when this was uh, purchased. So um, I think he purchased this actually when it went on sale. Um, so right before they discontinued this, he purchased this. So this is a late model 500 3D. 70 amp brushless uh, ESC um, instructions, which I'm really glad I had these because I did have to do a throttle calibration to get the ESC to arm. So I had that information immediately available and I was able to fix that ESC beeping and of course the manual. And I think that's it. And um, to pair it all up, I was able to bring out my good old trusty DX8 Gen 1 that I've flown with for so many years back in the day. And this, um, you know, the setup sheet in the manual, they have one specifically for this radio. It is very easy though to program it in like a DX9 or a Gen 2 radio. It's very, very easy, but it felt really, really nice being able to use this with this helicopter. 
you know this was the same era and i've really enjoyed it i will put a video out on this thing um but it probably uh, that'll probably be one of the only videos just because it's not going to be flown very much just put on a shelf and uh, acknowledged and you know enjoy the way it looks and enjoy that i have something like this especially because i really wanted it as a kid i could never get it and now i'm able to have one so yeah if you have any questions leave a comment thanks for watching